You mentioned DeFi. Um, for those who don't know what DeFi is, um, uh, can you give us a 101 and what and you know what you think about DeFi on on Bitcoin? Sure, this is one of my favorite topics. So DeFi is short for decentralized finance. The basic idea of decentralized finance or DeFi is to take all of the components of banking and financial services, lending, savings, certificates of deposit, yield more sophisticated instruments like derivatives and make all of those capabilities available using this latest uh, smart contract technology, which is software. But what's unique about this software is, is that it runs on the open internet, just like Bitcoin, in a way that it can't be shut off. There's no off switch, mm -hmm. right? So there's no company that owns a, a, a DeFi system. So there are DeFi systems now for borrowing and lending. Right. So that's the marketplace where, on the one hand, I might deposit Bitcoin into the DeFi marketplace to earn yield. And the other side, I might be borrowing it, but it's over collateralized in dollars. So I'm not losing money. And if the LTV gets too high, they're automatically converting those dollars back to Bitcoin for me. So I'm not taking a risk of losing my Bitcoin. So, so these marketplaces now manage tens of billions of dollars just for borrowing and lending yield and and, and you know, borrowing against your Bitcoin holdings. That was the kind of first generation. We're already on like generation four of DeFi where, you know, these kids are now developing, you know, sophisticated derivative systems, uh, sophisticated, you know, yield generation uh, systems to the likes of which the world has, has never seen before. We're basically wholesale rebuilding the entire banking stack, the entire stack of capabilities of the banking system one layer at a time over the last five or six years. Ethereum was the first system that we could use to do this. Now we have Solana, which is gaining in popularity because it's more performant than, than Bitcoin and scales better. So you can actually, in theory, with the upgrades coming to Solana, get almost Visa-like numbers in, mm -hmm. in transaction processing. And remember, banks are open 35 hours a week, maybe some are open an extra five hours on Saturday, so 40 hours a week, right? These systems are open 24 seven, 168 hours. They're, they don't close, there's no holiday, right? And, and so, you know, this weekend when, you know, markets went haywire, people were able to access their Bitcoin, right? So, so I think this is the future of banking. Do, do you see Bitcoin getting integrated into the traditional financial systems? It's hard because, you know, the way Bitcoin settles is very different than the way traditional asset movement works. And, and so you get into all these hypothecation and, and it's complicated, I apologize, but these rehypothecation issues with related to leverage and other things we talked about earlier that don't reconcile well with banks. The problem is not Bitcoin. The problem is the arcane banks. Bitcoin, yeah. Bitcoin works just fine. So, yes, you can do it. My concerns are not related to the things that the government would have you be concerned about. My concerns are more related to the issues with the banks themselves. Um, but I actually think the banks are going to be rebuilt faster than people think over the next 10 years, leveraging this technology. The problem that regulators have now mm -hmm. is that these systems have no off switch, no borders. They don't know anything about draconian banking laws. They've never heard of the Bank Secrecy Act or KYC rules. They just run, right? I'm, I'm all for following the laws. I have no problem with following the laws as a company. I do. I have a, a team of lawyers that make sure that we do all these things legally. But when you implement something in software and put it on the internet, they're not asking for permission anymore. It just runs, right? Nobody asks for permission to put Bitcoin out there. It just runs, right? So these DeFi systems that you know lend and, and borrow money and, and generate yield for people, they just run. And, and so this is the future. So I can't really see a model where, you know, the laws and, and, and regulations exist the same way they do today in 25 years. It's, just, it's, it's actually not possible. It doesn't really make any sense. I think the borders as we know them related to finance are going to disappear just like they have for messaging on the internet or video streaming or Zoom calls. It's just another protocol, right? So we, we created a protocol for accessing text, hypertext, HTTP. Well, we've now created protocols for money. First with Bitcoin as the money itself, and then protocols for banking. And I think Bitcoin yep. is now being integrated into those protocols. The first generation of DeFi or these decentralized finance systems didn't really use Bitcoin. 
the next generation actually do. And the merger of the two is incredible, right? That's when you start to cons- when you can start to see a world where you don't ask yourself anymore, what is this worth in dollars, but what is it worth in sats or Bitcoin?